The road to success is full of challenges, but the tests we face keep our brains kicking, our bodies fighting, and our hearts ticking. Kataba has been on his own journey this past year to keep the minds of his students full of fervor, their bodies full of vigor, and souls eternally replenished. Many hands and hearts have contributed to the success of the Mind Body Soul campaign. Today we celebrate how far we've come and relish the road ahead. The path is laid before us. Together we will achieve the future Kataba and his students deserve. Here in the annex, we've renovated the lobby. It has new carpeting, new walls, new insulation, new air conditioning. And both the dance studio and the rehearsal hall have been completely insulated. They have new ceilings, new wall coverings, giving it a bit of a quirky personality. It becomes a place where the students can hang out between classes, where people can meet and form relationships, which are so important here at Catawba College. And it also says that these classes are important to the college and important to the theater department. So this program will be a Master's of Health Science degree in clinical mental health counseling. And what that means is this is a, a program to prepare entry-level counselors into the field of mental health work. Graduates of this program will be able to qualify for state licensure as a licensed professional counselor. I think the message that is communicated by making this program a priority is that this program in particular is conveying a potential message that we need to take the skills and knowledge and competencies that we're developing here and apply it in a way that meets the needs of people. This program will produce professionals. Your career, your profession is helping people overcome. We have to kind of turn back to this idea that there's a great need for working with, with people and helping individuals grow and become better versions of themselves. Student Success Program at Catawba College is a new initiative that has been three years in the making and we were looking for ways to increase our retention rate and uh, the persistence to graduation rate for our students. Student Success Coaches are trained professionals, they all have at least a master's degree and they work as partners with all of our first year students. So some of the feedback that we've already heard from the students who have been working with the success coaches include things like raising their grade in their class by three letter grades, learning some strategies that really help turn their test scores around, and that the success coach helped them with their time management. Those are probably the three biggest things that our students are reporting to us and sharing with us that have had the greatest impact on them working with a student success coach. I came into school sort of reserved, a little shy, I'm no longer either of those things. <laughs> and I think that is in no small part due to my experience that I've had at the conferences and that is due completely and totally to the honors program. Probably the experience I'm going to remember most is when I traveled with the program. Um, I've gotten the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C., Memphis, Tennessee, and Raleigh, N.C. <laughs> with the honors program to different conferences. And so those have been invaluable and wonderful experiences. The Digital Learning Lab is going to be in the library on the mezzanine, and we'll have 3D printers. Each print station is attached to a Surface computer, and we'll also have a video suite that has a digital video camera, an iMac for editing, a green screen, a lighting kit, and microphones to use so that you can create professional looking digital videos. I think students using the Digital Learning Lab will have the chance to be on the cutting edge professionally when they're looking for their careers, searching for their first job. They've got experience with tools other candidates may not have had experience with. Students also applying to graduate school have this experience of being able to synthesize knowledge, think critically and creatively about topics, which can give them an edge in interviews or on applications or in essays. This is the Shuford Science Building. It was built in 1958. And the, the big renovations that have been done so far have really helped up 
uh, the safety standard for the building. Uh, the organic lab, which we're in now, uh, the general chemistry suite, and the organics and the stock room have all been renovated at this point, and we're going to be renovating the rest of the spaces on this floor and the majority of the spaces in the, in the entire building itself. It's, it's almost going to be like I'm in a brand new building by the time we're finished. It's, it's all driven by the generosity of, of the donors. And all you can say is thank you, and thank you, and thank you again. Uh, the, the lab spaces that the students will be working in here are going to be comparable to the, the big research campuses that get tens of millions of dollars thrown at them, that have state-of-the-art equipment, state-of-the-art facilities. I don't know how many times over, especially the beginning of the semester, right, the first two or three weeks when everybody first came back, you'd hear the door open and then, wow, what did they do in here, right, where people actually came in and started looking around these labs. Just having the students being able to use this space the way it is now compared to what we had just six months ago, I think it makes them more excited to get in here, do the work that they're going to be doing, learn what they're going to learn, and I think having these renovations make that experience that much more enjoyable and it really it gets them to want to do more. When we didn't have the lights, it was really difficult to get everybody together for practice. So we were doing a lot more individual work and there was only maybe one day on Saturdays where we had everybody working together. And softball does have some positions that are kind of individualized, but most of the other stuff, you know, we do as a team. We just had a hard time doing when we didn't have the light. I think it's really encouraging for, for our girls and, and for all of the athletics and for all of the school in general, just to see how fast this Mind, Body, Soul campaign is moving forward. There's so many people at Catawba and around Catawba that support Catawba in, in every aspect of our school. And I think that that's, that's a wonderful advantage to being here because you, you know you're gonna be supported. I had been trying to start a beach volleyball program for all my years here at Catawba because I had wanted to come to a college to play beach and indoor. So it's pretty exciting. I think it's awesome to be a part of this kind of new tradition that we're starting also. So in years to come when the program's developed and all these new accomplishments have been made through the beach program, I'll be able to say that we were part of that first team. Every night there will be a pretty large group of athletes or non-athletes out there playing on the courts. In the spring when they first got here, all three courts were full of people playing all the time. So we've created the Catawba Clergy Network with initial funding from a grant and what that program will be is a variety of things. We're going to have annual gatherings called Catawba Clergy Days where we will bring local and alumni clergy to meet on campus with one another and with students. So that will be ongoing education, it will be networking opportunities, it will be chance for renewal and our students will also get to see real live ministers and hear about what they're doing, hear about what their lives are like, ask them questions find out more about what they're really getting into if they're interested in ministry. Through the Catawba Clergy Network, our alumni and UCC ministers will also have the opportunity to apply for grants to support their ministry, and they will also be able to be in communities of practice. So that's like a small group where they can talk about the nitty gritty of ministry, the ins and outs of what they're struggling with. A lot of our ministers are bivocational, so they're a pastor, but they're also holding down another job, and that just brings unique challenges. And so we're forming these groups around specific contexts of ministry, so ministers can connect with one another and share their wisdom and share their resources together. To hear the organ roar back to life in May of 2019 was an incredibly amazing oral experience and a highly emotional one for me. I moved here in the fall of 1995 and played my first recital here at the chapel in that year. And even at that time, most of the organ was not functioning. So to have some of the stops that weren't even speaking in 1995 roar back to life in 2019 was like hearing somebody speak that had not been able to speak for 25 years. Now that it is fully functional, I am once again rediscovering the joy of coming in here daily and practicing for at least an hour and uh, finding new and different things about how I am able to perform and the literature that I am able to play. This instrument with over 120 ranks of pipes is one of the largest in North Carolina and allows us to play any of the literature from 
any style of music. I love this place. I look forward all the time to returning to Catawba. In, in many ways, Catawba is more home to me than my own home. With this campaign, everyone has the opportunity to select from 180 different projects or programs. So it can be in any one of the three fields, mind, body, or soul. And underneath of each of those, there are just a wide variety of projects that you might be interested in. So we need this funding and this Mind, Body and Soul campaign to make sure we can continue and improve to give more students more opportunities that, so that when they graduate, they are really in the world they need to be in and they want to be in, whatever that is. I think it's a very exciting time for Catawba. I am very optimistic, I'm very excited about what is happening on campus and we, we have a great administration, we have a great faculty, and most importantly, we have a great student body. I think it's important to be involved in a place that has invested so much in you. You know, so often we invest so much in Catawba, but we have to remember the people before us and the uh, sacrifices that they had to make our education possible. And so I know that's a hard thing for younger alums to realize, but long term, we need to think about what Catawba's given to us and how we can give to future generations. We're, we're here because of the generosity of folks in the past. I support Catawba because I understand how expensive it is to run a great university and the value that is there for students when they get to learn from a setting like Catawba has. I want to see it thrive and continue and be just as great as it was when I was there. So I give to the, the Ken Clap Discover Fund because of how much DOS means to me as a founding father of it. But really that's the group that probably had the biggest impact on me in my four years at Catawba. Dr. Clapp is like family for us. Uh, he, he really is part of our family. He married my wife and I. He was at Catawba when my dad was at Catawba. The, the time with him, I look forward to seeing him every chance I can, and he's, he's a big part of what Catawba means to me. So it's really important for me that Catawba still is around for future students so they can receive the same type of wonderful education. Not just, you know, lifelong friendships, but also professors who are really there. Like, you get that one-on-one -on -one experience. And so just the type of environment that Catawba provided me with is completely invaluable. I want future students to have the same opportunities that I had. So I was, I was able to receive scholarships because alumni actually donated. Mm -hmm. And so now I want, I want to be able to contribute to that as well. I want other students to be able to have scholarships so that they can continue their education. The education here is so good. It's like Ivy League good. And students gain so much by getting this rigorous curriculum. Our spaces in Hoke Hall at the moment, they're kind of wide open spaces for our students to work. However, we don't really have applications that they're probably going to see in the industry as that's continually changing. And especially, you know, what we hope to do is uh, right now we've got some audio and some live sound gear and things like that, but they really don't connect and they're really not on par with what's happening currently with industry standards. We want to bring our students to the highest level of artistic achievement and everything else about their art. However, we also want them to understand everything about the business in our industry, and we also want them to understand the technology because we be believe the broader base the education, the more opportunity they will have to find a pathway in the industry. Number one impact where our students will be much more employable upon graduation, and it will broaden their aspects for employment by a long way. Secondarily, as far as their art is concerned, while they're in college, they can learn to produce their own music. In the industry, there's a whole network. If you're a songwriter, you still have to create demos to be able to place your music with sync licenses, with film, or with other artists, or with commercials, or with other things like that. Students could be producing that type of product while they're in college to help promote their art even while they're here. There are a lot of advantages that a turf field has over a grass field. First and foremost would be the ability to use it in all types of weather. When I was an athlete at Catawba, we played a lot of games in the rain. And while we were able to win, it would have been much easier if our field wasn't muddy, and grassy, and wet. Cheer teams and dance teams and the band at halftime and the color guard would certainly benefit from a turf field 
just as much as the athletes. I couldn't imagine playing an instrument and walking around on a muddy field and trying to focus. So just knowing that you have sure footing out there would really help everyone. We've accomplished so much with the Mind, Body, Soul campaign. But there's more road ahead to travel. Will you join me on this path laid before us?